Wings of Fire, Book Six, Moon Rising, Chapter Four. So much for keeping my head down and staying inconspicuous, Moon thought, feeling the eyes and thoughts of every dragon in the cave on her. The ice wing was frighteningly beautiful, with horns like deadly icicles and sharp spikes at the end of its whipped thin tail. His gaze pinned her down like a spear. Never seen one look like that before, she heard him think. Didn't know they had silver scales anywhere except under their wings. Those ones by her eyes are remarkable. And she looks like she's listening to something. A brief wave of curiosity shivered through his thoughts. And then was abruptly buried in a landslide of anger and self-loathing. What am I thinking? Nightwings killed him. And I hate them. Oh, all of them. Moon tore his eyes her eyes away from his, wishing she could shut her powers off. She could have known from his expression that he hated her. She didn't need to see the layers of how complicated her feelings were. Who did we kill? Someone he loved, obviously. She found it easy to believe the Nightwings. She knew deserved these hatred. I wish I could be someone else. Someone he would give half a chance. Five seconds, he snarled. No. Moon said, forcing the word past the scavenger's terror and the sharp edges of the ice wing's anger. This is my scavenger, he hissed. My claw mate let it out, but it is mine, and I did not bring it all the way here to see it eaten by a lying, smoke-breathing night wing. He took a step closer, and Moon felt the cold coming off his scales. I can freeze you one part at a time. First your horns, then snap them off. Then your tail, freeze it and snap it off. Then your claws and your wings. Should I go on? Moon closed her talons around the scavenger and brought her wings forward to wrap it around it too. It was impossible to focus her thoughts. Then the ice wing's mind was so bright like the sun dazzling off a glacier. In between his threats were images of another ice wing, laughing and shouting in the snow, and the same dragon, surrounded by sky wings in a mountain forest. She couldn't follow the threads. It was as if the dragon he mourned... It was... If that was the dragon he mourned, how did he get killed by night wings? If he was captured by the sky wings? If an ice wing wanted to eat his scavenger, why had he brought it all the way here? If he hated Moon so much, how could he also be noticing how gently she held the scavenger? Say something, she yelled at herself, but already she couldn't remember what he'd said and what she'd only s seen inside his mind. Hey, calm down, all right? A sandwing shoved his way through the watching crowd and stepped in between Moon and the ice wing. Moon recognized him as the dragon she'd made eye contact with outside her cave, the one who had noticed how nervous she was. No one is getting sliced up or frozen or snapped apart. He said to the ice wing, What is wrong with you? Did you even try just asking nicely? He turned to Moon. Hey, I'm the claw mate. Although most dragons call me Kibley. My intimidating acquaintance here is Winter. What's your name? He had a gold earring in one ear with a warm orange amber teardrop hanging from it. A few dark brown freckles stood on, out on his nose, which also bore a small zigzagging scar. The rest of him was a light sandy color. His poisonous barbed tail was tucked neatly in a safe spiral, although it kept twitching in Winter's direction. He looked like a normal sandwing, but he didn't think like one or any dragon she'd met before. Brushing against Kibley's mind was like standing in a speeding river. He was almost unconsciously scanning the cave as he spoke to her, assessing threats and deciding which dragons were the most dangerous. She was not on the list. While he was focusing on defusing Winter's tail, and negotiating with Moon. He was also checking escape routes and noticing who wore the most jewelry. A small part of his brain was even clocking a chicken in his peripheral vision and he thought that he thought might scurry close enough for him to catch. This did not help clear her mind at all. They were waiting for an answer from her. To what question? Her name? Moon, she managed to whisper. Moon what? The ice wing snapped. Moon what? She didn't understand the question. The scavenger was moving in between her claws, and his fear now had streaks of confusion with it, which was not muddling up Moon's head at all. No mention of the crowd watching 
and the dragons in their excited mind clan. Maybe they'll fight. I wonder what scavengers taste like. Why isn't she saying anything yet? I can't believe she took his scavenger. I bet if he slices her face off, he'll totally get expelled. Moon what? Winter nearly shouted. Come on, Nightwing. We know your names are all lies. So what's yours? Moon Destroyer? Moon Ear? Moon Crusher? Winter, you seriously need to cool down. Kipper yelled. He shot a grin at Moon. Get it? Because he's an ice wing? I know. I'm hilarious. Moon Watcher, said Kinkachu, coming up behind Moon. She twined her tail around Moon's. Moon knew that the rain wing was trying to be reassuring and supportive. But the effect was that Kinkachu's socks were suddenly as loud as thunder, clashing up against the scavenger's small, hot spark of terror. An ice wing. He's so glittery and fierce and dangerous, plus a heroic sand wing. So much drama I love so much drama already. I love school. I love it. I love it. Moon Watcher, Moon Winter muttered, deflating a little. There was something shivery about hearing him say her name. But Moon couldn't tell if that was just because Kikachu was having starry-eyed sparkle thoughts about him all over her brain. Listen, Kibli said, this is my fault. I wanted a closer look, so I opened the cage. And that thing was halfway down the tunnel before I c we could even sneeze. But I promise you, the scavenger does belong to winter. So we're asking you nicely. Please don't eat it. Get your teeth anywhere near Bandit and you will lose them, Winter smiled. You are not at all clear about the concept of asking nicely, are you? Kibley asked him. Bandit? Moon echoed. Who names their dinner? Or keeps it in a cage? She had a sinking feeling that she had terribly misread the situation. Why, why, in all the furious jumbled thoughts and said Winter Head, hadn't she seen anything about him not wanting to eat this scavenger? Indeed, Kibble said, the scavenger with the silly name is Winter's pet. Nobody told me we could bring pets here, but I guess the nephew of the Ice Wing Queen gets some special privileges. And if you don't know, and if you didn't know he was Queen Glacier's nephew, don't worry, he'd have told you sometime in the next five minutes. I only mentioned it. Winter said irately, because it seemed entirely obvious to me that the niece and nephew of the Ice Wing Queen should each be given a private cave, so I wanted you to know that we wouldn't have to be clawmates for very long, as there has already been some kind of mistake. Here's hoping, Kibley said. So, Moon, can we catch you a sheep or something instead? Another million thoughts flashed through his head in the space of two heartbeats. What do night wings like? Never trained for bargaining with a night wing. Can't be too different from other dragons, right? Start with food. But she doesn't look like the dragon who thinks about prey a lot. Not tre treasure either. Scrolls? She's a cool scrollish look about her. What can we offer? If she eats him, Winter will be furious. Maybe I can get him a new scavenger. I wasn't going to eat him, she blurted quickly, before she could get lost again in all the tracks of the thoughts around here. I didn't want anyone to eat him. Nobody can eat him. Not ever. Winter tilted his head curiously at her, and she felt his fury thaw a little. That is exactly how I feel about it. Great, Kibley said. Weird, but great. We're all on the same roll of the scroll then. He looked expectantly at Moon. She tried to block him out so she could listen to Winter's thoughts for a moment. It seemed to be true. She was keeping the scavenger as a pet and would violently dismember anyone who tried to eat it. She didn't think the scavenger understood that. He seemed to be terrified of Winter as all the other dragons, but at least he'd be safer in Winter's cage than anywhere else in the academy. She carefully unwound her tail from Kinkachu's and lifted the little creature into Winter's town. His claws, his claws brushed against hers as she did, and she flinched. Both the cold and the furious turmoil of guilt and self-loathing inside him. Ew, Winter protested, peering at the scavenger. You got him all sticky. Moon realized her claws were still covered in crushed mango, and she'd gotten bits of it all over Winter's pet. Sorry. She said softly. I just... She was just saving him, Kikachu pointed out. You could actually say thank you. Hmm, Winter said. Moon sensed play approaching along one of the tunnels, along with someone whose mind was warm and nearly as excited as Kikachu's. Sunny! She guessed with relief. She really needed to not be the center of attention anymore. Winter took his pet over to the river and dumped him in, prompting several, prompting several so sharp squeaking noises from Bandit. What does she know about scavengers? Moon heard him think. 
I wonder if she can figure out what's wrong with Bandit. Not that I would ever ask a Nightwing for anything. He's hungry, Moon blurted, and immediately wanted to bite her tongue off. No, he isn't. I offered him a piece of this deadly rat this morning on the way here, and a bit of walrus the day before that, but he didn't eat either of them. He lifted the drifting wet scavenger up and inspected him narrowly. The little creature had flopped over and curled into a ball of shivering. In fact, he hasn't eaten since Queen Glacier caught him and gave him to him four days ago. I gather that scavengers eat fairly infrequently. Or maybe it hates you and it's trying to starve itself to death. Probably said. Sorry about that, guys. I messed up the camera. Hey, okay, I'm just gonna fix it really quickly, and I'll start again. Winter frowned. Scavengers don't do that, do they? He drinks water when I give it to him. Have you, um... Moon faltered as he turns his scowl to her. Have I what? He snapped. Sunny's warm scales brushed against Moon's as the sand wing came hurrying in. Hello, she said brightly. She was much smaller than Winter and Kibley, but and not much bigger than Moon and Kinkachu. Moon liked the way her mind felt, all hopeful and determined. What's all the excitement? Behind them, Clay started shooing the watching crowd away. Moon could hear them grumbling about wanting to eat the scavenger or wishing there had been a bigger fight, both aloud and in their heads. Thanks, people tell me you brought a pet, Sunny said, turning to Winter. Is that it? Oh, I met a couple just about that size once. Winter arched his long neck and looked down at his, his nose at her. Queen Glacier said I could have him. If I agreed to come here, he said challengingly. If you say I can't keep him, I'm going home. Well, but you definitely can't have it in there, Sunny pointed out in a reasonable voice. A scavenger couldn't possibly survive the cold in Glacier's palace. Well, Winter hesitated, clearly ruffled by the logic of this. I don't care. I'll figure out a way. I'm keeping him. That's my point. I don't mind if you do, but remember, pets can be a lot of work, Sunny said. Especially a new pet you're still getting used to. You should ask Starflight if he has any scrolls on the care and feeding of scavengers. I'm sure I can manage, Winter said. He started shaking Bandit to get the excess water off. The little scavenger yelped and tried to hang on to one of the dragon's claws. Moon's talons twitched. She wished she was brave enough to grab Bandit back and hold him more carefully. There's an awful lot we don't know about scavengers, Sunny said. Maybe your ringling can study him. We'll tell everyone there's a no-eating scavenger's policy, but you'll have to take care of him and keep him safe. Sunny shifted her wings, and Moon caught the worries going through her mind. Did that sound bossy enough? Or too bossy? Will anyone ever take me seriously as the boss of anything? Who would dare hurt my scavenger, said Winter. Not if they knew he belongs to me. Perhaps I should get him a collar and a label of some sort. Belongs to the nephew of Queen Glacier, Kibley suggested with a straight face. Winter nodded thoughtfully, then shot him a suspicious look. But Sunny went on, but Sunny went on, is that all right with you, Kibley? It'll be in the same cave you're sharing, you, so you have to say yes, too. Otherwise, perhaps you can switch you to a different cave if we can find someone who won't mind the scavenger. Winter cleared his throat importantly. Perhaps you have forgotten that Queen Glacier is my aunt, he, he said, as though Sunny might be too dim to know such basic facts about the world. My sister is her niece, and therefore in line for the throne. Obviously, we should each have a private cave. That would defeat the purpose, Sunny said cheerfully. Living together is part of the school's mission of getting to know each other. Believe me, the Sea Wing Queen's daughter is here, and she's sharing a clay cave, too. There's a lot less grumbling about it, I might add, her mind observed. But she kept that to herself. Perhaps we haven't explained far, expanded far enough in the mountain for everyone to have their own cave. I don't mind, Kibler said. I mean, I don't mind the scavenger. His owner is the one I might be allergic to. Moon tilted her head at Kibley. Sunny had given him an easy way out of sharing Winter's cave, but he wasn't taking it. He actually wanted to be Winter's clawmate, although she couldn't see why. It wasn't quite that Kibley liked him. It was a bit that Kibley wanted Winter to like him. And she, 
He also kept thinking of a pair of big, bad-tempered sand wings, his brother and sister, in comparison to Winter. In addition, he seemed to be teasing Winter on purpose, as a kind of maneuver to make friends with him. All she could really figure out was that Kibley was more than a little complicated on the inside. Don't cause trouble, Sunny reprimanded him, sweeping one of her wings to stop Winter from lunging at his qualmate. I'm not, Kibley protested innocently. Someone should probably mention that the scavenger's not going to last very long, though. It looks like it's wilting. Hey, what if it has some kind of disease or something? It doesn't, Winter growled. He held Bandit up and poked him gently with one claw. Bandit whimpered and flopped him to the side. Don't die, Winter thought in a panic. He glanced around and caught Moon's eye again. She tried to look away, but he was already leaning towards her or urgently. What were you going to say before? He demanded about feeding Bandit. I, I just think I read somewhere that they prefer to cook their meat, is all. She stammered. Have you given him anything besides raw meat? If he's hungry, he should eat anything, Winter said grumpily. I think she's right. I have a... She paused and her mind went, friend? Former jailer? Dragon who nearly got me killed? She settled for, I know someone who kept a scavenger for years, and I think he cooked all her meat for her. Well, how am I supposed to cook anything for him? Winter demanded angrily. Ice wings had frost breath instead of fire. Moon knew all he could do was freeze the scavenger's food. Someone will help you. That's one of the great things about making friends from other tribes. Ha, Winter thought bitterly. I would help you, Moon thought, if you'd let me. You could give him fruit instead, King Kaju suggested. Here, she scampered over to a fruit pile and came up with a tower full of berries and a banana. Fruit, Winter said, wrinkling his snout. Disgusting. King Kaju took a blueberry, which was about the size of one of the scavenger's paws, and poked Bandit's nose with it. Here you go, she said. Mmm, blueberry. Eat that. Bandit blinked and rubbed away the blue juice on his face. He glanced up at Winter, then over at King Kachu, then reached out and took the blueberry in both of his paws. He stared at it for a moment, then bit into it. He's relieved, Moon realized, and wary, but too hungry to care. Ha! King Kachu said, giving the scavenger another blueberry. See? Moon was right. He's hungry. Moon shivered as both Winter and Kibley turned to stare at her. Winter's eyes were even more suspicious than before. How did you know that? he demanded. Oh, mother, Moon sought anxiously. It's only my first day, and I'm already making mistakes all over the place. How am I supposed to hide what I can do when this many dragons watching me and so many ways to mess up? Just a guess, she said softly. Lucky guess, Kibley said. Although his tone was friendly, she could hear the chords of weariness echoing in his mind, too. She's smarter than she wants us to know. Watch out for white night wings. That's what Thorne said. Never trust them. She looks too pretty to be evil, but what is she hiding? Moon took a step back and then another. I have to go. She whirled and hurried out of the prey center cave, feeling everyone watching as though their eyes were crawling right inside her skin. Unspoken whispers swirled through her head. What's wrong with her? Weirdest dragon I've ever seen. Don't understand why she didn't just eat it. Hope she's not in my group. And threading through all of it, the pure icy chill of Winter's last thought. I thought they said Nightwings couldn't read minds after more. anymore after all. So why does it seem like she can read minds? 